Hi, today we're going to take a look at the Lassie 2 Big Dock 20TB Thunderbolt 3 drive. This is our second Thunderbolt 3 storage solution that we are testing here on LensVid, so let's see what it can do. Today we're going to take a look at our second Thunderbolt 3 drive here on LensVid, and this time it's the new Lassie 2 Big Dock RAID solution. We have already talked a bit about Thunderbolt 3, its advantages, and some of its complexities, especially for PC users, on our recent review of the G-Technology G-RAID 16TB Thunderbolt 3 drive, so we're not going to repeat all of this here, aside from stating that with the help of the good people from ASUS, we have finally been able to fix our Thunderbolt 3 issues on our main test machines, just as we were wrapping up this review. So without further ado, let's dive into the Lassie 2 Big Dock 20TB addition. The 2 Big Dock is very well built with a full metal enclosure that has a nice feel to it. Unlike the G-Raid that we have tested, Lassie actually put a mini docking station in the front of the unit, hence the name, including an SD card reader, a CF card reader, and a USB 3 port. There is also a large blue LED that lets you know what the drive status is, and two horizontal bays that host the dual Seagate 10TB Iron Wolf Pro NAS drives, which on their own cost over $750 if you buy them off the shelf, and you can replace the drives yourself easily if you want. On the back of the unit, you have quite a few more connections, including a display port, a USB 3.1 Type-C port, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, and a power cable connector. Like the G-RAID drive, it comes with a pretty large power brick and a tiny, not too convenient, on-off button, which can also be used to suspend the unit with a short click. The unit also has a Kensington security slot if you want to lock the drive, and there is a grill for the internal 60mm silent Noctua fan which sadly you can't control, more on noise later. The unit is smaller than the G-RAID and quite small in general. It measures just over 22 cm, 8.5 inches long, and 12 cm or 4.5 inches wide, with a height of 9 cm or 3.5 inches, but it is equally as heavy, with the drives and all the metal weighing 2.8 kg or 6.3 pounds. The device comes with two cables, a short 50 cm or 20 inches Thunderbolt 3 to Thunderbolt 3 cable, we're guessing that this is a 40 gigabit per second cable and not the slower 20 gigabit per second cable that the G-RAID came with, but we're not sure, as well as a USB 3.1 Type-C to Type-A cable. We don't care very much for the short Thunderbolt 3 cable, especially since buying a long fast Thunderbolt 3 cable can be very expensive. We ended up getting a longer 2 meter 20 gigabit per second cable, so we can place the drive further away from us. Just like with our previous review, there are three main things to test when it comes to a drive like this. Transfer speed, noise, and reliability. One note before we start, similar to the G-RAID, the Lassie came pre-formatted for Mac. If you're using a PC like we do, you will need to use the Lassie RAID Manager to reformat the drive for Windows. This is a nice piece of software that was recently updated, by the way. We'll start with transfer speeds. We tested the drive in RAID 0, in this case 18.65 terabytes are available for the user, and in RAID 1, where only 9.5 terabytes are available for the user. We tested the drive using Crystal Disk Mark version 6, and we also did a real-world test moving files to and from the drive to a computer, which used Samsung 840 SSD. We tested speeds using Crystal Disk Mark on both Thunderbolt 3 and using USB 3.0, and just for comparison, we also tested using USB 3.1. You can look at the results on this table, you can see that the drive performed very well in RAID 0 with 457 megabytes per second read and 454 megabytes per second write, with a bit over half the speed in RAID 1, which is also kind of nice. Using either USB 3 or 3.1 brought the speed significantly lower, and if you're considering Considering connecting this drive using anything but Thunderbolt 3, we would suggest that you look for a different, less expensive option, although in RAID 0 results can still be considered fairly okay. We also tested the front SD card reader with some very nice score, especially when using the fast SanDisk 280MB per second Extreme Pro U3 card. 
our real-world results of transferring 3.6 gigabytes of data of 15 video files were a bit perplexing. We got around 156 megabytes per second to the computer, but about 360 megabytes per second to the drive. We suspected our system had some bottleneck with the SSD. We redid our real-world test when we were finally able to make our main computer work with Thunderbolt 3 using the ASUS Thunderbolt EX3 add-on card. Interestingly, we got very different results with over 300 megabytes per second on average to the computer, but only a little over 200 megabytes per second to the drive. This time, with a much larger test folder with over 60 gigabytes of data for more accurate results. As for reliability, it is way too early for us to tell with only 3 months of use and we might do a follow-up in a year's time if people will be interested. We can say that the Backblaze 2017 Q3 data stat report out of more than 1200 similar 10TB CK drives, zero drive failed. That is very nice to hear, but in all honesty, the few months that these drives have been around is simply too little time, although the sample rate in this case is not too small. When it comes to noise level, there are a few things that you need to keep in mind, including the fan in the back, which is actually not that noisy on this unit, as well as the spinning as sick noises of the drives themselves. In our noise test, the ambient noise was usually under 30 decibels and the drive from about 50 centimeters or 20 inches registered a jump to about 35 decibels after a noisy start, but with click and sick sounds every few seconds that can go up to 40 decibels. We found these noises to be quite annoying. Just like with the G-RAID 16TB Thunderbolt 3, operating noise seems to be the biggest downside of this otherwise really outstanding unit. So what do we think about the LC2 Big Dog Drive? This is, again, one of the first large capacity Thunderbolt 3 drives on the market, and as such, it is pretty impressive. The unit is very well built, has plenty of connectivity with very useful front SD and CF card readers, and easy to replace enterprise level drives, and it has a very impressive transfer speed for a two drive RAID solution. On the downside, at close to $1200, this is a lot of money per terabyte. The 16 terabyte version costs $200 less, which is still about $50 more than the similarly sized G-Ray drive that we have tested. Although you can certainly get the same capacity out of a Western Digital MyBook Duo desktop RAID for under $800, you will certainly not get the same speed, drive quality, or extra functionality out of that drive. Just like with the G-Rate, for us, the biggest issue with this drive seems to be the noise, and on this drive with a short cable, there is no way to hide the drive very far, and it can be distracting, especially if you're working on sound-critical projects. We actually purchased a longer cable, and we're going to try and place the unit in a cabinet with some soundproofing to reduce some of the noise, and we really hope to see some more soundproofing and silent drives in Thunderbolt 3 storage solutions in the future. So that was our look at the LC2 Big Dog 20TB Thunderbolt 3 drive. You can read the full review with all of our test results on Lensvid.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can find a lot more videos just like this. See you next time.